I think we are getting everybody in here. Thank Matt Payne just texted if anyone need, need, is looking. Oh, he's on. He's on. We're all good. Okay. Yeah, he wants to make sure he wants to make sure that I showed up is what he texted. <laughs> I'm telling you the glue of the show. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, for joining us along with everybody else. And a special our special guests, Beth Maitland and Michael Damien. Thank you so much. Michael Maloney is going to be your host from SoPub. Um, awesome. I wanted to let you all know that there is a thing in the reactions that says raise hand. So if you want to ask a question, you can get in the queue, but know that for the first part of it, Michael is just going to be talking to our two wonderful guests and walking down memory lane. So be patient, but you will get a turn. And with that, I turn it over to Michael Maloney. Thank you, Diane Brownstein, Soap Hub's peerless editor-in-chief. Michael and Beth, thank you both so much for joining us today and the fans of Soap Pub and the fans of The Young and the Restless. How are you both doing tonight? Awesome. Awesome. Great. Great. Happy to be here. Happy to talk to everybody. Happy to hang out with my friend Michael Damien for a little while oh. and my other friend Michael Maloney. Tell me, guys, um, I have to ask, how much fun did you have at the big anniversary party last week, last Friday night? Oh, it was unbelievable. It was a magical night, don't you think, Michael? Oh, it was, it was incredible. It was, it was kind of wild. I felt like I was at the Oscars, you know? <laughs> it was, I was like, wait a minute, am I, am I at the Oscars? It was the way it was set up. They did such a beautiful job uh, with the whole red carpet, inviting everybody from the past, present uh, to come together at such a beautiful, uh, magical location uh, that, that, church uh former uh, church that has been converted to an event space was beautiful and uh it was just it was the perfect weather everybody looked wonderful everyone was happy there were no <laughs> there were there were no outbursts of drama it was great <laughs> when you get that many soap stars together it is a recipe for a possible disaster but it was perfect it was perfect and for uh, those of you who are not aware the the location was actually not only a church but a cathedral in downtown LA yeah. in the late 1800s and when we had that big northridge earthquake in california yeah. it was condemned and the LA yeah. conservancy took it over and renovated it and it was breathtaking mm. beautiful place and it's been raining in California. They say it never rains, it pours. It's been raining since December. Yeah. We've got the perfect night. Yeah, it was a perfect night. I think it was also a very emotional night. I don't know for you, was it? I found there to be this this really beautiful, wonderful feeling all across, you know, this historical moment, in, you know, and going back to what the Bells created and to see all these people and, and coming together. And it started with, brilliant idea from Bill and Lee Philip Bell. And then from there, it just blossomed. So that was really just, it's a testament also to their, you know, their brilliance and what they created, this legacy. And to see the legacy, you know, materialize in that beautiful event space was was epic. It, it was indeed. And in fact, there were at least uh, two actors that were on the show that were present that night, yeah. this last Friday, that were on the show on the very first day, the very first Amazing. episode. And yeah. so all the way to here we are in the future, 50 years, what Amazing. a cast photo. They took a little a photo with all the actors on, in, on in, at the end of the rectory in this beautiful space. And yeah. um, what, like you said, it's, it was just magic. It truly was. Was there anyone in particular or especially that you saw that night that you hadn't seen in a long time, maybe someone you worked with or someone that you you just hadn't seen in a long time? There were lots of people. I, I saw oh, Bob. Yeah. Um, there were a whole list of people that um, were around during the 90s, uh, Michael yeah. Corbett, uh, that were yeah. around in the 90s and in the early 2000s, um, all the way back to the 80s when um, I first started. Um, and so uh, it was it was just spectacular. There was not enough time or enough space to get across the room to talk to everyone. I'm so bummed. I didn't see Michael there. I would love to have seen him. I saw Phil Morris, which I haven't I haven't seen Phil in a long time. And and uh, Peter, we saw Peter, uh, Peter Barton, right? Mm -hmm. He is fantastic. I, you came up and he gave me a hug. And I was like, it, it was so surreal seeing Peter. He looked amazing. I mean, I love his long hair. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he looked like a, you know, he looked like a, 
a movie composer. <laughs> just so cool <laughs> looking. But uh, oh, it, and then crew. We got a chance to see crew and people that, you know, they're the unsung heroes because they make it all happen and bring it, you know, bring it, you know, to all of you and uh, the camera and and costumers and production designers and just uh, it, it really was a. Uh, incredible seeing everybody they come up again wait a minute oh my gosh it's you you know and uh and it was was really fun because um honestly we haven't gathered to have any kind of a celebration since before covid it's Mm -hmm. been years three at least uh, since all of us have been able to be together and in that time a lot of the crew people michael's talking about have retired Uh, a lot of people have moved on a lot of people uh left during covid um and so it was it was fantastic to see all those faces that have made such a contribution to this proud legacy that we're all so blessed and happy to be a part of. Um, Can we talk about when you guys first um, started working together? Um, Beth Tracy was fond of Danny, kind of really, (laughs) really fond Mm -hmm. of him. And she'd gotten mixed up with the older man, uh, her college professor, and Danny kind of came to her rescue. And do you have memories of those early days of working together? Absolutely. We worked together before that particular story. Uh, I, my, the most amazing moments, I think, and I talk, we, we talk about them with the crew every now and then, were when um, poor, shy, quiet um, Tracy, always in the background, decided to sign on and be Danny Romolotti's fan club president and answer his fan mail. Yes. <laughs> And Michael, Danny finds out <laughs> that Tracy can sing and, and the, at a big concert, he says, I'm going to call it up somebody special to the stage yeah. right now. And he brings yeah. Tracy up to sing for the first time. And um, some of the crew guys were talking about this at the, at the party Friday night, the first, nobody, mm-hmm. nobody really believes you can sing or can do other things besides show up for your soap date. So w- everybody's behind their cameras ready to go. And, and uh, the music starts and we opened our mouths to sing together. Together. And I, I'm told that everybody leaned around the side of their camera. And went, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like in the scene in Tootsie. Remember when they all leaned around the camera looking? <laughs> it was, that was, that was very special. Oh yeah. That was a wonderful, wonderful event. That it also it. sounds a little bit like a star is born too. Yes. A little yes. bit, I think. And I think that was kind of the the foundation for Danny and Tracy's mutual yeah. uh, love. I, he was my first husband, but he married me to save me from the situation described. Michael Maloney. He um uh, poor Tracy ends up pregnant and she tries to kill herself. Yeah. And other funny story. Maybe Michael should tell this story. Um, Michael lived. In, oh, Danny had this little apartment and. Yeah. Um, And uh, Tracy went to Danny's apartment to put her head in his oven, but there was no oven and there was just a hot plate. And so I'm I'm thinking about this, like I read the script and I'm thinking, no, that's not going to work. So we get to, we get to the studio that morning to tape those very emotional scenes and they were all installing uh, an oven in Danny's apartment. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's a tragic scene, and you're, it's just the the comedy is it's terrifying. No, no, no. But you know, it's really you know that apartment. I know this. I'm digressing for a minute, but that apartment when they first got, built that apartment for me, it was a big deal, and I'll never forget. Um, I just I felt like it was my apartment, and I wanted to make it feel real. And so I'm I'm I ordered every morning. I get one of those large, you know, those large coffees. It's not like. 12, but it's 16 ounces at least. I had one of those coffees and all of a sudden they said, oh, we're going to, we're shooting now. And I, I was caught by surprise and I dumped the entire coffee into my sink, my Danny Romilotti sink in the kitchen, not knowing it's just running out a pipe onto the ground. So the whole coffee is <laughs> is pouring onto the floor and I hear, I see it, I panic and I, I, go to the door because I'm supposed to, you know, be en- entering or whatever. And I hear, I hear the stage manager or some one of the prop guys at set decorators saying, all right, what wise guy poured a coffee down the sink, you know, <laughs> and, and it was everywhere. But uh, I, back to uh, when we first got together on the show, um, mm. when, when Danny and Tracy, you know, as, as Beth mentioned that um, she was in this terrible predicament and she was, she was so ashamed and her, you know, her dad, you know, John Abbott would be devastated and 
who knows, you know, kick her out of the house, you know, but not that he, she wasn't sure, right? You were pretty, she was just it's really- overwhelmed with the re- emotion. You sort yeah, of what, jumped to conclusions. She was already shy and insecure yeah, and her family was yeah. in the beauty business and she thought she was letting them all down and she yeah. didn't know how she was going to ever tell anybody the truth and she just couldn't manage yeah. all the stress. So we got married and then I'll never forget living, at, staying at your place at the Abbott mansion in her bedroom. And I remember John Abbott, I slept on the floor or was it a couch or something? And John Abbott, you know, one morning you were gone somewhere and he, he comes in and, you know, knocks on the door. Danny's, he's looking around and it's like, is everything all right? I go, yeah, yeah, sure. Everything's fine. And I'm like trying to, you know, shove the blankets, you know, kick the blankets off the floor and put them under the bed or something. Cause he would, you know, we had to be careful, right. We didn't want to get caught that we were, but we were such good friends and right. it was really, it was a beautiful storyline. And I guess, I guess the point is that they were not lovers. They were Danny just saves Tracy right. Honor, and they were just friends who he solved the problem for her and saved her life as well as her yeah. reputation. But, but didn't we kiss? I thought we kissed. Yeah, we probably did. We kissed a few times. There was a couple of little, yeah, there was a couple. <laughs> we threw those and they were unscripted. We just, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, well, we had so much fun. That's so the beauty wonderful. of it, seeing the relationship, where will, where will it go? And and we would all want a friend to be there for us when we yes. need the most. Yes. And that's what it was about. It was about real friendship. And uh, that's what, that's what made it so special, I think. And uh, what a wonderful story. I'm not sure how long we were married, but that was a wonderful time on the show. I let, I set you free to pursue your career because I felt I was holding you back. After I was back on my uh, team and why didn't... regained my confidence and Lauren was, you know, tripping me up at every, yes. <laughs> around every corner. But you know what? I, I love this about what we're talking about, Michael Maloney. Um, our friendship has transcended being scripted and, and four decades of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I look up to Michael Damien as an inspiration oh, and so a darling friend. He and his wife are a powerhouse directing oh. and producing team, as well as being some of the nicest people on the planet. Oh, last so Friday sweet. night, oh, well, that's just honesty. Um, last Friday night at uh, our beautiful party we were just talking about, my daughter was my plus one. Oh, and so and <laughs> Michael and Janine embraced her and kind of took her over in the corner and talked about everything they have in common and made her feel so special. And that's a real testament to the mm. kind of people that Michael and Janine are. And I'm so grateful to have them after all these years as my friends. She's very special, your daughter. Wow. Janine saw her so I, like 50 yards away. And she said, you weren't there right next to her. And she said, that is Beth's daughter. I've never met her. I know it's her. I'm, I got to go talk to her. And she, and, and she was right. She's across all that cast. There was, well, you know, Michael, there was so much with the paparazzis and the photographers and the journalists and everybody coming together and cast and crew. There was, I'd say there's probably over 500 people at that party. That's what oh, I would sure. estimate at least maybe more. And it was anyway, you could just pick, she's just got that, that bright, beautiful smile and that glow, just like you, sweetheart. And what oh you, you did you did it right she is amazing what a great gal she's thank so you. special thank you my pride and joy as you can imagine oh oh i bet i anybody would be she's extraordinary absolutely you put in the time obviously <laughs> <laughs> they don't just come like that pre-wrapped you know? know she was pretty good out the out of the box as they say she was pretty good oh oh i'm sure she was but i could just see a lot of you i see a lot of you you see it too michael don't you Oh, absolutely. The sweetness, the kindness, absolutely. 100%. Thank you. Everyone, Michael Maloney has been our friend for a long time, too. (laughs) Yes. How many decades? Like, yeah, Michael. How long have we known each other, Michael Maloney? Uh, Well, you can't get rid of me. And I started started as a CBS page answering the phone behind the scenery at The Young and the Restless. I remember. Great way to start. And I was actually, this is a great segue. I was an extra in a Danny Romilotti concert. Woo-hoo! And can you talk about those? Because I watch some of them on YouTube sometimes and the way they were shot and the way they staged them, where it was pretty much the concert was yeah. the entire stage. Yeah. Victor's office, the Abbott, they were not on set. There yeah. was no room. And the way they positioned it, you made they made a hundred people look like a thousand. And when they would have 
Beth Yu and Tracy Bregman and Patty Weaver come out and sing mm-hmm. in the studio, putting aside whatever might have been going on with the characters, which was cool. Um, and you guys just, the four of you would belt it out. What were those days like? And I'm sure the other shows watched in stunned amazement at, at how you, how the young and the restless was able to make this look like a real oh. concert. Talk oh, about yeah. this, please. Well, well, first of all, Bill, you know, was so brilliant putting this together and he spared no expense and they did it. And I, I remember having talks with production about the scale of it. And they really, they built, first of all, the, the, you know, well, and they asked me a lot of questions too, because I was doing the exact concerts in real life. And so they were, it was sort of this very interesting parallel. And so they built the massive stage. They brought in the very lights. They did backdrops. They did everything the mat and the crowds. They brought in a lot of fans too, which was wonderful to be a part of it and the band and smoke machines and the pyrotechnics. I mean, literally everything was, you know, it was, it was just, it was great. It was like, you know, Hey, we're doing a real concert. It felt very legitimate and uh, not like we were shooting a scene. It felt, don't you think, uh, sweetie? Absolutely. It felt- Absolutely. You know, um, in those days, um, it's also part of the proud history of the building that we, uh, that we inhabit for 50 years across the yeah. hall was Carol Burnett. And on the stage that we stood, yeah. The Garland show used to be taped. Yeah, so right. these were also all of the crew people, the camera operators and the sound people. These mm-hmm. were technicians that worked on variety shows, Sonny and yeah. Shaker and yeah. all of these big concert worthy shows they had experience yeah. they knew how to shoot it they knew where to where to set the cameras up and yeah. they and so add all these uh, no expense no expense spared um uh, beautiful effects and lights and smoke and costumes and they would they one one uh concert they built us all Sergeant Pepper costumes. Do you remember oh, that? The, yes. <laughs> they had like the, epaulets the, and all yeah. these cool Sergeant. And so the, everybody was just uh, the all uh, yeah, all the shoulders were leaning in to make sure that um, and everybody got to shine. All every department got to do yeah. their best work. Um, it was a time yeah. when they they uh, you know all, there were thirteen or fourteen shows on the air, so there was a lot to compete with, and there was a lot at stake to yeah. get those ratings, to get those viewers, and. Um, yeah. So it, it was an amazing time. We would sometimes pre-record the music. We had world-class musicians yeah. who are still playing all over the place. You know, people, yeah. uh, the background band for Paul McCartney yeah. and Wings, yeah. uh, George yeah. Juber, Michael Ajokum, all these people that were massive, talented uh, yeah. background people. And we would show up at Capitol Records to pre-record the music. Yeah. And look up at that building that's basically a stack of record albums with a sundial on top. We thought that's just what was supposed to happen. And it yeah. was a magical, yeah. magical time. Incredible. And you know, it's funny, you just said that you mentioned Lawrence, pretty much everybody that we worked with, I work with them to this date. I have them playing on all of our movies we're doing and music that I'm recording. All those are the best players in the business and they still are. And they're world-class, as you said. And so uh, it's so much fun because, you know, we get to reminisce about when we recorded all that music. And especially, as you said, at Capitol Records, which was this, you know, legendary stage for some of the greatest movie scores, record, pop records, R&B records were recorded there. So that was those days at Capitol Records were a blast. Oh, it was a it was a golden age. I do want to ask you about other storylines in the 80s. But real quick, I just wanted to say one of our attendees. Um, Brenda, she has to leave for work early, but she did want me to yeah. convey that Beth um, Tracy has been an inspiration to her as she struggled with some issues. And mm. Michael, she loves your music and has been to oh. many of your concerts. Oh, oh, I love it! Wonderful. I'm sorry you have to rush off. We love Thank you. you, Brenda, so Wherever much are, for tuning Brenda. in. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank, Thank you for, you for watching all this yep. time. And uh, it's, oh it's, yeah, you guys, Tracy, uh, Tracy's weight with uh, weight struggles was. Oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. Good to have you here. This is so yes. fun. It, it is actually. I just want to jump on quickly to say again, Great. thank you for being part of my my teen years. Oh, you're so and awesome. with Tracy's struggle with her weight, that was an inspiration for me as well. 
because awesome. uh, I yeah. too struggled that, as well. That, that was very, that was very, very special storyline. Yeah. Yeah. And I still handled. love seeing her on the show all the time. Oh, I love she's... seeing you on the show. It's amazing. You're oh. beautiful as always. And do you remember and... my struggle with my tall hair? Remember that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the mullet, hey, the mullet. It's, hey, it's gotten down. It, you remember it really, you know, Bill Bell one time asked me, he said, Michael, are you ever going to cut your hair? Yeah, I said, the, with the mullet cut, but soon Bill, and then I got a mullet, and then he's like, Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, the mullet. I still really have was... your CDs, rock oh, on CD. I absolutely love I you. loved your music. So I just oh, want to thank say thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for being such an inspiration to everybody and love from Canada. We love you here. Oh, thank well, you. we love all you wonderful Canadians. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again, Michael, for helping me. Thank you guys. Much mm -hmm. love. Thank you. Bye. And thank you, the fabulous Soap Hub tech team, for doing that because I have no idea of how to bring people in. <laughs> Your um, tech team is amazing. I see all of them; they're brilliant. I see their brains going a mile, hundred <laughs> miles an hour, and they're, you know, they're well, making it all happen. It's Michael, like it, isn't it true that the first crossover to Bold and Beautiful was not Sheila, but actually some of your hair going into twelve thirty in the afternoon? Yeah, I think so. I. <laughs> Uh, Michael Damien used to come into the hair and makeup department and teach us all <laughs> how to blow dry our hair with Paul Mitchell's I, drying sculpting spray uh, and a blow dryer. No hairbrush. Do you remember how we did it? Hands, the you hair, hit it. Yeah, the you hit it. blow dryer. You cauterize it <laughs> while it's happening and you freeze it. And, you know, I wish I would have done that Friday for the party. I, you know, I'm a little disappointed because oh. Christian LeBlanc has been trying to, you know, raise his hair up all the time and get it taller and taller. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming after him. We're going to have, we're going to have a hair war. And my regret is that we didn't all um, invest in Aquanet or something. We would why didn't we buy, yeah. Why didn't we buy a bunch of, yeah, we could have owned hairspray, bed. We would have we could retire. <laughs> That's right. Well, who wants to retire? What? And give yeah, up. Sure. Yeah, exactly. No, there's, there's no business like showbiz, mm -hmm. you know? The, um, you guys branched off into other storylines as the 80s progressed. Um, Michael, you started working more with Laura Lee and Danny found True Love with Cricket. And Beth, you worked with Don Diamant and, and got more involved in other storylines. So, but I, I really love how when, Michael, you came back at the end of last year, where you guys got together for New Year's Eve. And yeah, that was great. we're going to see more of you guys in, in the coming weeks. Um, I guess let me let me go back to what was it like when you started to work with other people, Beth? What were those years with um, with Don Diamant like? Well, you know, it's hard to top Michael Damien for dreamy. I no, don't I think anyone what. would disagree. <laughs> but see, um, Don. <laughs> but I love to, Don. I do too, and I have to say he's a pretty funny guy. The mm. I got the, the two handsomest, oh. funniest guys on the love show, you. and I'm so fortunate because every single day, all we did was laugh and have fun. And yeah, we did a little bit of work, but it's not work when it's being around people that you adore and that make life light and happy and make work not a drudgery. It was so much fun. It was hard in those days. Sometimes, Michael, don't you agree? We would have like 40 yeah. pages of dialogue in a day if we were in very heavy storylines and very emotional yeah. things going on. Yeah. It was a lot of work, but somehow we all managed to, we had fun. to make it um, just so much fun. And occasionally we'd go out, you know, to the Palomino club to hear the Weirs play. Um, <laughs> Follow. We were uh, Michael's groupies, and we'd follow him around. <laughs> oh my God! You're so but awesome. And we take the crew out. We'd also, you know, um, I was reminded a few times by some of the crew at the party, and they were saying, you know, remember we, you guys, you guys just take us out afterwards, and you know, so that remember there was that place right across from CBS, mm -hmm. and we used to go there a lot, and you know, you know, buy the crew a, a little, you know work is finished or the week is finished drink. It was always a really nice uh, uh, get together because we got, you know, got a chance to bond outside of uh, the building. And I think also uh, Tracy Bregman mentioned that, mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, I think she knew the name of the place. I forgot what it was, but it was like some Kelbo. sort of- It was called oh, Kelbo's. Kelbo's, you know it. Okay, it was called Kelbo's. Anyway, we used to have a great time with the crew and just a little thank you to them because uh, they worked so hard and they were so kind and, and creative and really uh um they made it very comfortable on the set we had a really great uh set uh ed scott was a wonderful executive oh, producer sure. and, and prior to that west kenny uh and he was he was fantastic and i even go back to john conboy was 
was a producer when yep. I first joined the show and, and always, they were all very, very kind and, and, uh, and, and so you can, you can hear from, from all of that. It's no surprise yeah. that we really do feel like family. We really do feel like we were raised together. Michael and I grew up together yeah. and, you know, uh, it, we watched each other blossom and go and get married and have children or puppies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> or, or movies. Movies are yes. kind of kids also. Thank, thank um, you for saying I grew up by the way. I appreciate <laughs> that. Cause well, I, Jean, I, Jean I, didn't say that. She hasn't said that yet. I'm, I haven't grown up yet. <laughs> I would have to arm wrestle with her over that point. I oh, think. you're so sweet. But, um, but Michael, to circle back to your question, Don Diamant was one of my other favorite people to work with. He was no. so much fun. And um, also, it, it, that was sort of the magic of Tracy, what has been my great honor to play over this time. Um, the, the Is it Brenda that had to leave us, that said hello? Oh. Yeah. Uh, mentioned the weight storylines there yeah. Tracy was the underdog and everybody was always rooting for her and yeah. I was so fortunate to have like I said the dreamiest guys in the in the storyline you know in the cast during those years um, find the magic in Tracy find the good in Tracy find something adorable and likable and lovable in Tracy and give um, hope I was sort of the the representative of um, of people that weren't Typically, you know, the, the glamorous, gorgeous, thin and and beautiful people in our beauty business on a soap opera. I was a normal person, just an everyday girl with an everyday um, a pile of problems that we were all just trying to navigate and do the best we could. And, and I, I just love that Bill Michael spoke to his genius, found a way to insert mm. someone really relatable into yeah. the kind of stories that were way bigger than life. We had this normal girl that we could relate to and root for and hope for and uh yeah tragedy befell over and over and over again but it's a soap opera but it but that was such a magical time and I'm so proud to have been the one selected to do that all these years Beth do you recall the scenes that comprised your uh your Emmy reel in 1985 mm. with a one the outstanding supporting actress in a daytime drama and you were the first why in our actor to win you held that record for about maybe 20 minutes and then right. Tracy wow won. that's but, awesome but you are the first acting winner do you recall first. tracy uh lauren tracy to oh boy i do does am i the only one who does that tracy lauren lauren tracy um yeah, we do it yeah every day whenever we're on the set together and then <laughs> i do it to them. and then trisha cast and trisha dennison and it just seemed like bill bell hired people just to confuse the audience that way, to confuse the crew rather. Um, but do you recall uh, what scenes were on your reel? We just talked about them. It, I, my reel was the day that I try. I I went to Danny's apartment and tried to stick my head yeah. in his oven. Cricket yeah. um, smells gas from outside the apartment yeah, and throws right. a brick through the window. Call nine one one. Call nine one one. I still remember yeah. her doing that's that. That's right. Show like 14 years old when she started on the show and yeah. she calls Danny and Danny comes and Danny and cricket save Tracy. Yeah. And, um, and I, the, then the other episode in those years, you had to select three episodes. So another, the other episode I chose um, was recently um, on cbs.com. Mm. Um, it was that when we got to pick our favorite memories, um, Tracy eventually has her own nightclub and Lauren, evil Lauren pays all the people <laughs> waiting out front not to come in for her opening. And oh, no. there, there's only one table, just at one couple in the restaurant <laughs> who didn't make reservations. And they're the only ones that are there for her opening night. And she sings, she comes out on stage and with a cello and a stand-up bass, Michael Damien and Kevin Bassinson on keyboard, <laughs> she sings, here's that rainy day. And that was wow. the other uh, episode that I used wow. for my for my wow. reel. Wow! Wow! Incredible. Boy, uh, Lauren was boy. She had her bitch days, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she was a stinker. And and you know what? We were talking about this recently. There's all this bullying and awareness, and we are so happy that that we've made progress. We, we, our civilization has evolved into having that be not, not acceptable. But in those years, I don't know if we could tell those stories now. I don't know if they would be able to yeah. put a lot I, of those things on television. I think they should try so that they can 
follow through and get to the resolution, they might have to do it more quickly with today's mm -hmm. audiences wanting things to be yeah. done more quickly. Yeah. Beth, we've talked yeah. about this scene, but I think it was at um, Catherine's, which was really Marge's uh, funeral reception, where Lauren basically came over and apologized. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was such a, a wonderful payoff to longtime viewers. Mm -hmm. um, that was really powerful. Do you remember that scene? I do. And I also, there was another scene as well where we run into each other in the hallway outside okay, yes. the apartment and we have a similar scene. It's very brief, but it, it somehow, and I, and both Tracy and I would love to revisit that. We would love to have some, something that brings them together to work together on something or whatever, and actually talk about their relationship a little bit more thoroughly to really honor years and years of competition and crisis and hurt and regret. Um, and we don't, we try really hard in our, in our culture now not to behave like that. And so it kind of, for viewers that have been watching for all this time, it would be a full circle moment. I think we'd all appreciate. I'm so glad you yes. remember a second scene where, where it was addressed because I remembered that scene and I could only find one of them on YouTube. And I thought, did I imagine that other scene? No, it took place. Mm. Michael, what's yes. what your favorite memory on the show or, or one of your favorite memories from? Oh, wow. Well, I think you, you, we, we talked about it. I think, well, let's start with the concerts. I mean, they were, they were very special and working with, with Beth and Tracy and, uh, you know, I'll never forget the very first performance on the show. It was at because you know when Danny first came on, I worked at Jonas's. I don't know if you remember Jonas's. It was a it turned into Gina's, and the and the owner looked like Humphrey Bogart. Do you remember that? That <laughs> I do. I was do. So cool. You're like a busboy or something. Yeah, I was a busboy, <laughs> and I'm mop, and I'm mopping and I'm mopping the floor, and I got the broomstick, you know, or the mop stick, and and everyone's gone, and then all of a sudden. I take it and I start to sing and pretend it's the microphone stand and I'm doing the, the rock moves and then boom, flash into rock concert. And we shot the uh, concert over on the Price is Right stage. And I'll never forget it was She Did It was a song. Uh, it was a song I had out. It was, uh, you know, that I was promoting at the time. And and that was so much fun. Uh, I wore, I think I wore spandex, if I recall. <laughs> I had spandex. I think it was a purple span. Uh, it was pretty fun. Um, but but uh, that was, that was like, that was a great first memory. And talk about, um, you know, a big bang right out of the box. I mean, that, you know, I think when I came on, it was happening so fast. Uh, and all this stuff was happening at, at hyper hyperdrive. And it was really wonderful. And, and I think, you know, we, we had, of course, the concert events. Uh, the wonderful story with the uh, storyline with Beth was fantastic. And that was in the early stages. And then, as you mentioned, I started to work with different cast members. And, you know, it's funny, you mentioned Lauren. And I don't actually recall Danny ever really seeing that side of her. I, I'm pretty sure Danny never saw that side. She hid it from you. I know. And, and my wife is still obsessed with one, one thing that was not resolved on the story on Young and the Rest. It's only one story, one, one little plot that never got resolved. Wow. Uh, Lauren gave, uh, Tracy gave a present to Danny for Christmas. And, and Lauren intercepted it and said, oh, I'll give it to Danny and I'll take care of it. She took her name, your name off, put her name on and gave it to me as a gift from her. And I never found out. I never thanked you for the present on the show. Oh, so you're welcome. It was my great pleasure. It yeah. was it was my baby tooth yeah. that I yeah. had. <laughs> when she was I was going to say a Rolex watch, but no. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we had so much a lot fun. of and, my hair. <laughs> and, and, oh no, it was so much fun. And then and and, and working with Laura Lee and the incredible storyline that was created, and the big uh, Hawaii event. Uh, wedding there it was was spectacular and bringing the whole crew and the production to Hawaii I mean that was epic and uh, uh, you know and then of course working with Michelle Stafford and that was you know what a ride that was a wild ride and uh, and of course Doug Davidson I love Doug that was the first person you know my first scenes were with Doug Davidson and Stephen Ford mm. those were so when when Doug when Doug who played Paul and Stephen Ford who played Oh my God, I'm blanking on Andy. Screen. Andy, thank you. Andy when Richards. They, thank you. You're so good. When they left, you know, because they were all, work, we were all working at Jonas's together when they left. Of course, that's when I 
started to pretend I was a rock singer, grab the, the broomstick. And, and uh, so anyway, those were, uh, Doug and I, uh, and, and Stephen had wonderful times uh, back then on the show. They're my neighbors now on either side of me. I live in the central coast of California and what? Stephen lives a little bit for like 40 minutes, half an hour North. And Doug lives about an hour South in San Oh, Park. I know where Doug is, but I didn't yeah. know that you were so close Stephen's to Stephen. Stephen's got oh. a ranch up in San Luis Obispo. So oh, wonderful. we into him at film festivals. We see each other every now was and then. He, was he at the party? Cause I don't, I don't remember wasn't. seeing him. He, he wasn't. wasn't. Oh, okay. He uh, just got married. He got married. Oh, fantastic. So yeah, Wonderful. that's probably where he was on his oh, honeymoon. Oh yeah, it's on his honeymoon. Okay, all right. <laughs> he could one have had it at president. YNR party. <laughs> one of our uh, veteran uh, YNR watcher fans here, uh, Donna, I believe she said that it was actor Jerry Lacey who played mm. Jonas. And I believe he's Thank married you. to um, Julia Duffy in real life. And Jerry played the meanest character, one of the meanest characters ever on Dark Shadows, uh, Reverend Trask. Wow. Wow. So he's a great actor. That, that is the, Dark Shadows is the only soap opera I ever watched before I was wow. on The Young and the Restless. And um, wow. I remember him very well. He was so scary. He was so scary. Wow. What a great, what a great guy. And uh, he didn't scare me. He was wonderful. And he just, every time I saw him, I just kept thinking of Humphrey Bogart. That's all. He just, it was so bizarre and wonderful at the same time. And my, my dad and mom, and, oh my gosh, he's just like Humphrey Bogart, you know, and uh, you know, wonderful. Michael, one of the unresolved, um, I yes. guess unresolved or unexpected story developments that didn't happen because Bill was so great about um, circling things back. If something, if there was something. Sure. Oh yeah. Except, well, except for the, for the gift that Lauren <laughs> oh. came on. I think we could throw that. I think we can, you know, cut up some know. slack on that one. He's, I mean, I mean, it could have been something really expensive in there. So I think it was. Uh, I think it was a lock of hair. Actually, I, I still okay. have it. Actually, That's priceless. <laughs> yeah. But I I asked you this in an interview not too long ago, where yes. when Phyllis's machinations were found out and that she had lied about Daniel's paternity and even having sex with Danny. Danny did not cheat on Cricket, and it would have been a natural resolution mm. for Danny and, and Cricket. She'll always be Cricket to many of us, or Christine to reconcile, but by that point she had moved on and right, you had right. history with Beth, history with Lauren. I mean, it would be great if you could come back for yeah. a couple of years. <laughs> I, love my, couple of I, like, I like that about Michael. He does things in bulk, you know? <laughs> I thought he was gonna say a couple of weeks, I, a couple of years, a couple of, the, I love you, Michael. with this figure, how do you feel? Oh, uh, you're so awesome. Uh, well, I, I think that that's a really good, I mean, that's, that should be explored, you know, what, you know, that the reality of that and, and maybe it should be brought up and, you know, it could even be almost, you know, well, you know, actually, I really never, <laughs> I never really did, you know what I mean? Just something that, that could open it up and the discussion again, but that would be fun. Uh, I mean, Danny Cricket had some really, uh, really nice scenes together before the uh, new year mm -hmm. and we had a great time. Um, this, the coming up episodes are a little bit different uh, I can't really give away what's going to happen, but there's some pretty extraordinary things planned in the next few weeks and uh, a lot of surprises. Um, I wish we could tell them something. Don't you wish we could give them some yeah, secrets? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think we should. I, this is, it, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's, there are things that are going to happen that are yeah. sort of sort of epic and harken back to the way stories used to be told. Yeah. Um, and it, there's, there are some, like Michael says, some big surprises that, nobody will see coming so tune yeah. in and it's I mean, fun because we're all part of it which i think is really fun too is it that you know the band we call it getting the band back together you know danny and and uh tracy and 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 lauren and and of course patty patty Weaver, gina. you know mm -hmm. gina it's really fantastic so um uh, i think that's that's extra special just having you know everybody together uh, and, and experiencing this adventure we're about to go on We've seen in the promos that the stage is set for everyone to come together. And I think that's pretty much the most important yeah. thing to know yeah. is that the stage is set for everyone to interact. Um, yeah. I think we're ready to maybe take some questions now. Great. Right. Um, and how, how do I, uh, if someone from the team wants to. Your command central up there, I could see they've got you covered. They're going to handle Michael, it. Melissa oh, is first in the queue. <laughs> so. Ashley, why don't you um, spotlight Melissa and let her ask her question? 
Melissa. It looks like I'm unable to spotlight with video off, but I have you on muted, Melissa, if you want to talk. All right, oh, hi, there I'm we go. here. Um, hi, Beth and Michael. I follow you hi. both on Twitter. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Beth, I participate in the Maitland Monday YNR posts. I know you're so awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to say that these two ladies in this picture are the reason I started watching YNR oh. um, since 1982. Love it. Um, and my question for both of you is. Oh, oh talk about a cliffhanger. Uh, Melissa, you need to unmute yourself. Try, try one more time. The killer is. Ugh. Your Wi-Fi, it your, was, your. It said the host muted me, so, you know. <laughs> okay, try one more time. Take two. Um, my question for both of you is yes, what does ready? it feel like to be on, a, be a part of daytime's number one soap opera? Oh. It's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. It's He's so absolutely right. Oh, it's it's you know it's it's a thrill. It's I, I remember the day that the show. You remember the day the show went number one way back. We were all part of that, and and it's knock on. I don't have any wood. Well, here you go. Uh, you know, and and never look back after that. The show just kept kept this trajectory, and uh, it's. Uh, you know, it's I a, think it's, I think we're just a little bit over 35 years as number one. Yeah, it's, it's an, what an amazing thing. What an yeah. utterly unbelievable thing. It feels it's awesome. incredible. It feels amazing. I was I remember the day I was five years old. Uh, you probably remember. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. I'm not 40 because you said 35. So yeah. it's yeah. So anyway, I remember that. We got it's, you. We got yeah. you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I still was drinking, you know, milk out of a bottle. And, no, go ahead. <laughs> December 1988. I remember it well. Oh, wow. Yeah, 1988. That's awesome. Yeah. Summer? Sure. It was the summer, right? Uh, December. December 1988. Wow. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. How fantastic. It's just an honor to both talk to you both. And um, oh, I hope you, you guys continue the greatest show ever that I love to watch so much. Oh, thank you. So and awesome. thank you for all you do to support yeah. us and love us through all of this and all these yeah. years. We appreciate well, it. Melissa, thanks of course, so much. We appreciate you. Thank <laughs> you. Bye. Okay, now we're going to go to Candace, and I think you're on. Hey, Candace. <laughs> hey. How's it going? It's going good. First, I want to say thank you for taking out your time to be with us today. Um, also, happy anniversary to you guys. I mean, this, there would be. I'm going to cry. I knew this was going to happen. I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> because, because I've always said this, the soap community is my second family. I literally have grown up. You guys have raised me. So, you know, oh. you guys get, did, did a pretty good job, I think. Um, oh, I think, but, you're, I think you're turned out great. We're very proud of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. But my question is, what advice would you give to your characters, if you could? Oh. Oh, that's a good one. It's a great one. Wow. All right, you're up. Come on. Okay. <laughs> give me a chance to think. Dear little Tracy, you are enough. You are more than enough. You have everything you need to live a big, happy, beautiful life. Great. Well, that yeah. was okay. The, okay, you went deep. I, I was going, I was going like light and fluffy. You know, I was like, gonna like Danny rock. I on. was gonna, I was gonna, yeah, exactly. I was, <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, when we do a music video together on the show, it'd be incredible. You know, and we and we sing, you know, some romantic song together, and and uh, you know, reunite. I I, I want to get. No, I, I really, I know we joke, joke about it, but I really do want, you know, I know we teased it with New Year's Eve when we sang together for New yeah. Year's Eve, but I really, mm -hmm. really want uh, the three of us, um, you know, and, and if, and if, you know, Patty Weaver's available, the four of us, but the three of us, because we did a lot of really great performances together. I would just, I think for nostalgic purposes, I think it would be really special to have us do something together on a, on a, you know, a concert's concert schedule a concert scale and i think that i i hope the audiences would enjoy it as much as we would really enjoy actually that opportunity of uh, coming together so and anytime that danny can get together with this lovely lady i mean come on we had so much fun 
it went by too fast though our last visit so mm -hmm. i really would just love to uh you know have more more scenes obviously with with this fabulous superstar down there and she's got a great voice have you do you remember you know how great she sounds huh yeah i was I waiting for to see a video i was waiting to see a video of you guys singing at last friday's um party i was literally looking at everybody's instagram and I was like, okay, so so it's gonna happen. Like, get ready, everybody. Okay. Oh, we could have performed. We could have performed at the party. That would have been fun. A little oh. karaoke. <laughs> mm -hmm. It would have been a big machine in my purse. Oh <laughs> man, so that place. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I think Soap Pub should do that for the next fire chat. Is to get everybody together for a little concert, like yeah. you know, just the same. I'm just on the idea. You guys it. don't have Let's to take it. It's but, a great idea, Candace. And now that I've got the hang of uh, the spotlight, uh, uh, maybe I'll I'll get into the audio stuff too. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Candace. Thank you. you. Not a problem. Love you, guys. Love you too, sweetie. Oh, okay. So sweet. Now I think we've got um, Donna. Donna. And, uh, oh, I've made Donna really big and the rest of us not. <laughs> um, Donna, if you want to unmute, you can ask your question. Donna, you are the star of this fireside now. Um, I don't see her at all. I just see you. She has to get on camera. We oh, can't hey. spotlight her if she's not. Oh, um, okay. Oh, she needs well, to I get. I don't know how to do that. Oh, Donna, is your camera? You. What's your question? Is your camera oh, turned okay. on, sweetie? Just turn your camera on. I just on, right? asked you to start the video. Maybe that'll come up and it'll do it. Oh, yeah. okay. Hold on. <laughs> it asked you to answer all these questions oh, oh, you know. right. oh, hi there <laughs> there she is oh you look have... beautiful darling oh, thank you i actually saw you in person you were in portland many years ago in the 80s along with like 20 other acts all lip syncing to your songs i went to see you and adam ant but new kids in the block all oh sorts i remember of doing a show you with that? adam ant yeah yeah but, but i don't but think I we were lip syncing but i, but I don't think we're like five years ago even oh so he's, he's, he's great he's great yeah. thank yeah he's awesome in fact you know well, I you're think great gonna... too and oh, i would love so to sweet. see you and um beth and tracy singing on the show i was hoping that's what you, they do tomorrow but evidently not <laughs> oh uh, tomorrow well, they're finally showing the the ball <laughs> oh it starts tomorrow oh fantastic yeah. <laughs> wow uh, all right but, I had several questions, but um, since you were talking about Don Diamond, I uh, I cried <laughs> like a baby when they killed off Brad Carlton. I oh, no. was not expecting that at all. No. I, how did you cast members feel? How did Don feel? Did he know <laughs> much in advance they were going to knock him off? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he knew over the bold and the beautiful. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I always feel like um, it is a big tragedy when characters are lost in the storyline. I yes. know that they, uh, they, they make these thing. choices for um, for yeah. ripple effect. They'll make a choice like that when it has so much impact, it can't be yeah. avoided. For, uh, all across whole bunches of different families or businesses, whole bunch of different store parts of the storyline. But um the loss of Don Diamant and the loss of Jerry Douglas were the two most significant. Yes. Well, at least Jerry things. hung around the ghost for the most. Uh, yeah, the, he yeah, for that, years. yeah. He, and got he to, died just before his birthday in real life, too. That was uh, so sad. I know. I know. But, mm. but I, I really miss Brad Carlton. I loved his character. And the drowning sequence was such a good film sequence. It was so sad, but mm. they did a great job filming it. It was shot really well the way Colleen came back to usher him off to right. the other side. And then the bold and the beautiful came along to usher him off to the bold and the beautiful. I tried watching <laughs> the beautiful several times. And I, even though Don's on it, I just can't watch it. I just, I like Young oh. and the Rest. I've watched since day one also. I'm that old. So oh, I, you're not old. <laughs> older than you. No, you're no, looking I, great. I, a YNR fan since day one, so I will stay that. A uh, Jeannie Cooper, I missed too. Oh I just, yeah, Jeannie. God, God bless you, Donna. Yeah, we love you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for letting oh, me my. talk. It, you both look great. Oh, you're so <laughs> and sweet. Hopefully, you get a chance to sing on the show. I hope so. That'd be great. Let's do <laughs> it. And we're gonna go now to Colleen. If Colleen can um, uh, unmute and sorry, Michael. I think we have Terry up first. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little mixed up. It's like Hollywood Squares on my screen right now. <laughs> Rose Marita Block. Um, uh, uh, Ashley, I'm sorry. Who's next? We have Is it me? Terry. Yeah. Terry? <laughs> yep. Hello? Hello. Terry. Hello. Hi. Hey. Um, Michael, I don't know if you know my name or whatever, but I uh, talk to you on Twitter all the time. Um, been a big fan ever since you were oh. 18 and I was 14. It's been, uh, oh. you know, just a couple years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so yeah. T yes. I, I, I would tell me, who, tell me your name on Twitter just so I can, I can it's, make the, it's Terry King on Twitter. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. You're fabulous. Oh, thank you. Oh, um, I, think I love you're it. Pretty, <laughs> you already answered my question though, I think, because I was going to ask if there was going to be a concert or if you're allowed to say if there's a concert when on this uh, returning this week. Um, oh, I guess well, you kind of already answered that, that there's not. <laughs> well, I, I think, think we can say what there's not. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. But, but Beth, remember, there's some other stuff that happens, right? It's <laughs> There's of definitely a, other stuff that happens. Of a, but of a <laughs> possible musical nature, possibly, right, as well. Okay. Yes, but yes. no concert. There's not a concert. Well, no, I was not hoping a, there was going to be a big concert. And now no, that I'm older, I would maybe be able to, you know, head over to L.A. and be in the audience because that was oh my, my dream God. when I was young, but I was too young oh, to drive at the time. <laughs> I'll tell you what. When we do another concert, 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 we got to get you out there, okay? You got to come and join us, all right? I would absolutely love that. That would be awesome. I've okay. seen you in concert a couple times and I saw you and Joseph twice, but. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Where, where did you see me and Joseph? In LA. In LA at the Pantages. Yeah. Oh, that's thank where you. I All those years you. ago. That's where I saw <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're so awesome. Yes. Thank you. But I love you both. And, and love Beth, you. I really would want Tracy to end up. And everyone else is saying they want um, Cricket to end up with Danny, but I really would rather have Tracy end up with Danny. Ooh. They can live their golden years together. Ooh. Maybe we'll have a cat fight and fight over him. Oh, oh, maybe so. Please, I would be honored. <laughs> well, thank You're you so awesome. much for uh, taking you. the time to do this. It was really nice talking to both of you. Thank you, Terry. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. darling. Um, thanks, Terry. And Ash, who is our next? question asker. Carla Smoot, if you want to start your video and we can pop you on the screen. And if I could ask a favor, if we could limit it to one question, we'd love to get as many people in as possible. Thank you so much. How much time do we have? No, I'm just curious. I'd like to let you guys well, maybe we could wrap up in about 10 minutes or so. Are you good with that? No, no, I've, I've, I'm here for all of you. I'm, I'm awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Thank we could. So much. Yeah, I'm good. I didn't know. How, I just want to know so, so I, how fast I have to talk. That's all. So we can <laughs> burn through this. So I don't want to. I don't want to miss anything. You know. <laughs> I see Carla, someone. Carla, you want to ask ahead? Hi. Hi, Michael. This is Carla. Um, I just have a question for the upcoming gala. Um, are you planning on singing? Oh, I think we got this question. Um, well, oh, uh, that you're going to have to watch because this is this is going to be a complex one. Because it, uh, believe me, when I got the script, I was surprised at what was going on. And so, if I was surprised, and I know you were Beth surprised, <laughs> we were all sort of surprised what what was happening. It was really fun and it, and uh, quite a roller coaster ride. So I'm not going to rule out anything. Okay, so you've got to make sure you watch. All right, I, I wish I they, definitely we will. Had to, we had to, we had to promise not to say anything to not give away any spoilers. But okay. Um, but I have been I warming. Guess, I've been warming up my voice. If that helps, okay. Okay, um, <laughs> I am a fan of the YNR show. I didn't watch it much when it was in the eighties because I was in okay. high school at the time. Yeah. But I just started discovering your song on YouTube. Oh. Okay. And the song that I really, really loved that you sang back in ninety. I don't remember what year it was. The Summer of Dreams CD. Okay. What a, what a price to pay is oh. the most gorgeous song I've ever heard you sing. Oh, you just thank have you. a breathtaking voice. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Oh, you're I can never welcome. be. Oh, yeah. I remember. I, I remember love that. I remember I writing saying, it. It was so Yes. Uh, and was, I would uh, sing that song you. right with you 
every every night I have Ooh. it on my YouTube playlist. Wow. I would sing that and I, I memorize the words. It oh. is it's just breathtaking. Oh, thank you, darling. You're so sweet. My head is expanding as you continue talking. <laughs> And you know how how uh, difficult that is because it's already quite large with the yeah I can't fit most hats on my head anyway you probably don't want to know that it's it's hard to get spoilers out of the actors um, I know we're we're, we're Cameron, terrible and I'm a professional and it's hard for me well did Cameron, I Cameron Grimes uh, voiced uh, a movie role last year she wouldn't tell me the ending and the name of the movie was Mickey Saves Christmas and oh. she didn't tell me what happened oh man. <laughs> But well, Mickey saves Christmas. But you know, that's that's a dead giveaway. I know it was <laughs> even then. It was hard pulling stuff out of her. Um, yeah. oh, Colleen. Well, we have a very special fan with a special name, near and dear to Tracy's heart. Um, Colleen, why don't you tell us, ask us your question, please? Michael and Beth, you are a part of my own history because of your storyline with Tracy Bregman as the Mean Girl character. And I do remember the oven scene. You are the reason I first started watching the show. And I've been loyal ever since then, including when I was on military deployments, I would read Soap Opera Digest wow. just to stay up to date. So I'm wondering what year that was. I know it was after 1980 because the show has been a big part of my life and you're part of my history. I, I'm trying to remember how long I've been watching. And that, secondly, um, how often are you told that you are the reason that they started watching the show? And I, I just love your character so much. Thank you. So I, I want to date for you about, an, about 1984 to 85. Um, I won an Emmy for that, uh, for that uh, year. And I won my Emmy in 1985. So it had to be the earlier part of that year and into the early months of 1985. I think in those days, the cutoff was March. So it was March of 1984 through March of 1985 is when you started. I was in junior high school. Or no, wait, that's high school for me. I'm sorry. Okay. Awesome. Hey, first, first of all, thank you for your service to our country. That's yeah. really thank wonderful. You. Thank, thank you. you. That means so much to us all. And thank you for watching the show and, and going back to uh, the, the 80s. My gosh, what were you, three, four? <laughs> oh, no, I'm a little older. <laughs> uh, you look fantastic. I mean, you're, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And yeah, I want to also say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so Colleen, I wanted to also say, um, uh, it's rare. Uh, people, people say a lot to both of us, I think, that our storylines meant something to us and that, you know, they related to something that we've done, either loved uh, the concert, the rock concerts with Michael or the storylines with weight related issues or something with me. But I don't know if anyone has ever said I'm the reason that they started watching the show. How about you, Michael? Oh, wow. Oh, I, I think maybe my mom <laughs> and my grandmother, and I couldn't call them because if I call my grandmother, she'd say, she's a, she was Italian. I'm watching you on the stories. They called me back later. She hung up. <laughs> I just had act. She hung up all the time. I can never call my grandmother when I was on Young and the Restless. She would, even if I wasn't on that day, I can't call at, you know, back then. And oh, anyway, thank you so much. And uh, it means the world to us. Thank you. And Michael, I hope you're around for the long term and same with oh. you. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. You met Michael Maloney, right? Not me, right? <laughs> Michael, I'm just in my mind, she means me. I love I you. I love you, Michael. You're going to come on as my press agent. I, I happily, happily. Um, Jason, we have you on board now. Could you ask your question, please? Hi, Jason. Yeah. Hi, Michael Jason. and Beth. Love hey. you both. Thank Bye. you. Love um, you too. Oh, thanks so much. Um, I was just wondering, Michael, um, Face Right Out of a Dream, how did that song come about? Oh, wow. Uh, that's so wild. I remember recording that. I was actually doing uh, Joseph and the Maisie Check to Kill the Dream Code at, the same, at that time I was recording that album. Uh, thank you for bringing up that song. Most people don't actually bring that song up. Uh, and Love so, it. Uh, yeah, you got a face right out of a yeah. dream. Um, uh, yeah, I got it. You know, that was a collaboration. You know, I was working, uh, I work a lot with my brothers and we brought in uh, some really great people uh, to uh, collaborate on that song. But, um, I, you know, I just, um, I'm blanking on something. I'm trying to remember exactly the date and I'm so sorry, I can't remember the date, but um, gosh, I'm, I know it's gonna come to me after you get offline. I'm like, hey. Love hey, the song. 
do me a favor, send me a note on my Instagram, the real Michael Damien. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to send you more information about the song. Okay. Oh, brilliant. Love it. Yeah. And Beth, yeah. um, you, every time I watch you, it was a calming influence through, through the childhood in the eighties. And, uh, and, and I guess your personality in real life shines through all the time. So in everything you do, oh, all your she's scenes, amazing. So thanks she's so magical. Much. Magical. I, she is mad. Oh, I know it was Stephen, Steve Plunkett called me and said hey listen michael i've got this song that i want to talk to ah. you about it and we got together and put that song together yes yeah, so anyway, oh, it's a I, was, I, I was blanking my brain you know it's, when you get to be my age you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no you're you looking great and oh, um it got, well, that song that song got my brother through the night when he was trying to find um a new apartment in uh, in sydney so you saved the day for him with that music you. it was soothing oh, thank, thank you thank you it means a lot Fantastic. thank you god bless thank, thank you, you very much guys if you're okay we just had a couple of quick few more questions sure sure yeah thank no. you both so much um we have dorothy why don't you please go ahead with your question hi michael and hi beth Hi. Um, my question is, which comes to my mind so often, is it awkward to be kissing on set? <laughs> Only I, I'm thinking I don't know that I could do that. So I'm just wondering how you all do that. Um, a lot of banaka helps, by the way. <laughs> you just <laughs> remember that in the 80s, banaka that was so popular mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think it you just uh, once you do it for the first time on camera, right? Don't you think it, it it's well, first of all, it helps uh, when you have a really great rapport with the person you're working with. That is the most important thing, the rapport, the chemistry and the respect. And from there, um, you, you know, that really helps. Uh, you got to have somebody really, you know, you really feel great working with don't you agree you feel comfortable i do with? you know it's a funny thing i'm i'm uh <clears throat> i'm always amazed at like having to go on auditions and kiss like on a first audition where you haven't even met yeah. the other Ooh, person or a test or something yeah um, but we are so comfortable with each other michael and i but anybody that we're put with we get a chance to work together first usually before we actually have to kiss so we get to be comfortable with each other and i think michael you're right that's really it changes everything it's a little awkward at first you get like a hundred 120 people staring at you doing something usually yes. kind of private yeah yeah it's it's a little bit odd i will tell you one kiss quick kiss story i was shooting the music video do you remember against all odds the song yeah. i sang with with uh lauren on the show oh, sure. and we made a music video financed by Catherine chancellor and so i'll never forget uh i ha i they want me to kiss uh lauren you know tracy bregman and so i kissed her and then and then Wes Kenny, our producer, comes out, and I, I'd never even met Wes. I don't even remember. I think he just started that day, and he comes out. I'll never forget. He's like, Michael, you got to really kiss her. You got to really mean it. I'm like, okay, I thought I meant it. No, really kiss her. Okay, okay, I'll really. And then all of a sudden, he walks away, and then uh, Tracy Bregman says, uh, oh, Michael, my parents are right there on the side. I want you to meet them. Mom, Dad, say hi to Michael. I'm like, did you have to tell me that right now? And then, and then roll camera. And I, I was, you said, you asked about difficult. That was difficult for some weird reason, having your parents 20 feet away while I'm doing this. That's where it was really hard for me. I'll never forget. Oh God. I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh, they're going to hate me. They're going to be like, I see her dad looking at me strange. I think he's mad. Except that her dad was a producer and her mom was an actress. So I think. Yeah. I, yeah. But I was still with their parents. I was, I was like, oh, I was so uncomfortable, but anyway, sorry to do a uh, ramble. Who's next. Did we, did we answer that correctly? Do we get a, a kiss? Mm. Um, Dorothy, thank you so much. We have one Dorothy, last darling. question. Evangeline, please go ahead with your question and then um, and then thank you. Hey guys, it's Evangeline. Good to see you. Um, hey, how are you? I am good, Michael. How are you? Good, good, good. I have a question. Did you ever, ever like make a song for like a fan, like dedicate a song to a fan on Young and the Restless? Like I would say like a song that you would do that people aren't like familiar with. Like um, the one mm -hmm. song that you were singing to Laura Lee was um, I Had a Dream. Oh yeah, yeah, I Had a Dream. Oh yeah, um, 
yes, I do remember that song. Boy, you got good memory. Uh, that was a, wh- a while back. Um, <laughs> but um, I haven't. Well, it's kind of difficult because in the in the on the show, it's really difficult to actually do that kind of a of a dedication on camera. But uh, because you know, you're in character, you're, you're, you're being Danny Romilotti. But let me just yeah. tell you. Yes, you're exactly right, Darlie. But let me just say this: everything we do on the show, song acting it's all for you it's all for the audience it's really it's for your entertainment and we do it from our heart and we'd love it because we know really it's for all of you and that's what we're that's why we work hard it's uh i think more for the audience than anything yeah so 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 that we show up you're saying is a dedication to Mm -hmm. to yours so every song i sing on the show is really for the audience so it's it's uh so there you go you've got a lot of songs i've dedicated to you (laughs) <laughs> thank you and i really hope michael that we could really like meet like in person because okay. i have so many ideas and i think like you know like i could see that you're very good with the imitations of people and so am i so you know hey write to me okay. on instagram and let me okay. know when you have time to come and visit me at colin powell where i work all right <laughs> okay you're an angel Thank you so much. You're Evangeline, wonderful. thank you so much. And thank you, darling. Patience. I think well, I might have been that Michael. Um, listen, Michael and Beth, thank yeah. you both so, so very much for coming on with us and helping celebrate the Young and the Restless 50 years. It's an amazing accomplishment. You are both such a huge part of it. And I sincerely want to thank you for, for coming and joining us today. It's been truly a wonderful way to celebrate. This Thank wonderful. you, Michael. A great Thank pleasure. You. And we will meet you back here on our next 50th. So that yes. will be 100. I will be yes. here. Okay. I'm working on it. Lots love you guys. Drive. Thank you so much. This was Thank so you. much fun with you. Mm, I love you. So love you. Love you, Beth. Love you, love Michael. You. Love you. Thank Team you. Soap Hub. Love you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys. So much.